All right. So let's continue. Um, we're going to have a brief discussion about schedules of reinforcement, and then we'll move into the other parts of uh, operant conditioning, and then we'll go into observational learning. So when we talk about reinforcement, again, reinforcement, the goal is to increase the likelihood of a behavior. The question is, how often do we reinforce? So there are different models. There is something called continuous reinforcement, which is a one-to-one -one model for every desirable uh, behavior. If you do that desired behavior, you get reinforced, right? So uh, for every, uh, I don't know, box you pack, I give you a dollar, right? So let's say you're helping me pack move, right? So for each box, you get a dollar. So it's continuous, it's clear. But in the real world, we rarely get continuous reinforcement. We have something called partial reinforcement, which means that not every desired behavior is getting reinforced. You have to do that behavior a certain number of times before you're reinforced, or a certain amount of time has to pass before you're reinforced, right? So when it comes to uh, partial reinforcement, it's harder to learn the uh, connection between the behavior and a consequence, right? So it's slower to learn. And then, but once it is learned, it's harder to forget that learning, right? And when we talk about reinforcement, there are four schedules of reinforcement. We have something called a fixed ratio, variable ratio, fixed interval, variable interval. Now I'm gonna go through them, but before I go into each of them, I wanna define the words like I did with positive and negative reinforcement, right? And positive and negative punishment. So making sure we know what each word means. In the context of fixed, that means it stays the same. Like, so if you were um, buying a home, you would want a fixed interest rate, right? You want the interest rate to stay the same. Whereas variable, the variable means it changes, right? And if we're going to keep the theme of credit, um, variable um, interest rates occur when you have credit cards, right? So the interest rates can increase or decrease based on a, your payment history, and B, the general state of the market. And for example, more recently with inflation, we've seen even people with really good credit, their interest rates on their credit cards have gone up. Why? Because that is how the banks are dealing with the risk. But that's besides the point. The point that I want you to understand is fixed means it stays the same, Variable means it changes. Now, what's the difference between ratio and interval? Ratio refers to the number of behaviors that have to occur to get reinforcement. Interval refers to the amount of time that needs to pass in order to be eligible for reinforcement. Now, listen to how I'm saying that. Ratio the number of behaviors that have to occur in order to get reinforcement. Whereas with interval, I say the amount of time that has to pass to be eligible for reinforcement. So notice because it's operant conditioning, and I said in an earlier video, we have to have a behavior occur in order to get the consequence. So if, if the amount of time passes and uh, um, if the amount of time that's supposed to pass to be eligible occurs and you never do the behavior, you never get reinforcement, right? So, um, so that's interval. So let's go through it. So with fixed ratio, fixed ratio schedules are the easiest to learn because it's 
very predictable, right? It's you only have to attend to behavior, right? So the behavior uh, has to occur a certain amount of times. And it's predictable because it's unchanging. Notice the sharp uh, in the blue, the sharp rise of learning. Um, so it's predictable. Learning occurs quicker. Variable ratio, right? Listen to how I say it. The number of behaviors have to, uh, to do a behavior changes. However, it comes to a certain average. So if I had an FR standing for fixed ratio schedule, I know uh, FR10 means every 10th box I pack, let's say I get paid. Whereas variable ratio, it changes. So I might pay you after the eighth box and then next time after the 12th box and then next time after the sixth box and then the 14th box. But if we average it out, it comes to roughly every 10th behavior. Um, so does that make sense before I move on to interval? So if it's fixed, it stays the same. If it's number of behaviors, it's predictable, right? But variable, the number of behaviors needed to occur changes, but it comes to an average. All right, now with interval, we're dealing with time. So fixed interval, let's say it's uh, with a pigeon, uh, every 20 seconds, they're eligible for reinforcement. So the first behavior that occurs after that 20 seconds is gonna get reinforced. What happens if the pigeon pecks before 20 seconds? Nothing doing, right? Um, why? Because they didn't meet the time requirement. The amount of time that needs to pass didn't occur yet. And But after that occurs, uh, the first behavior is reinforced. And which is interesting, if you look at fixed interval, even pigeons understand this and you get the scallop response. So as it gets closer to the time of reinforcement, they start pecking a whole bunch, but then they take a break until- Hi, for Chelsea, good morning. Um, Thank you. Uh, your mic is hot, could you mute yourself? Let me make sure that happened. All right. Okay. So uh, it with a fixed interval, you have the scallop, right? Because the pigeon knows for a certain amount of time, they're not going to get reinforced. And then they only start working close to when the reinforcement time occurs. Because you get the most reinforcement for the least effort. When it comes to... Um, variable interval. Now, variable interval, this is the hardest for learning to take place because the amount of time to be eligible for reinforcement changes. And so this usually leads to a, a constant steady responding on a slow level, right? Uh, think about it. If I say, uh, the first behavior after 20 seconds gets reinforced, you're gonna wait 18 seconds before picking or pecking as a pigeon. But if I say on averages every 20th second, well, then you don't know if it's 20 seconds or whether it's 15 seconds or whether it's five or what is it that we're, we're dealing with here in order to get reinforcement. So you can't have a clear discernible uh, pattern. Now, uh, one of the interesting things about uh, Vegas, right? So Vegas, people play the slots or people play card games and they're waiting for that big hit. And the reason why um, the slots work the way they do is that every so often there's a big payoff. And you're always waiting for that. So, you know, if I keep putting in 
uh, quarters, eventually I'm going to get that payout. Now, I know now people don't put quarters in the machines. They have cards and things like that, but the principle is the same. So even uh, Vegas capitalizes on schedules of reinforcement for you. So let's summarize. Fixed ratio. The amount of behaviors that needs to occur for reinforcement stays the same. Variable ratio. The amount of behaviors that needs to occur in order to get reinforcement changes, but comes to uh, a specific average. Fixed interval. The amount of time that needs to pass to be eligible for reinforcement stays the same and the first behavior after that time occurs uh, is reinforced. Variable interval, the amount of time that needs to pass in order to be eligible for reinforcement changes, but the first behavior after eligibility will be reinforced. So that's why you have the graphic you do, right? Easiest to learn is the most predictable, fixed ratio. Hardest to learn is variable interval. Now the inverse is true as well. Easy to learn, easy to forget. Harder to learn, harder to forget. So you get more random responding when you have something like a variable uh, interval. You get more superstitious behavior. So let's stop the schedules of reinforcement there and um, we'll then go into a debate on whether a person should use corporal punishment with their kids.